Good afternoon, fellow reloaders. Greg Dennison here with Atlas Development Group, ADG Premium Shooting Products. Here, I want to demonstrate uh, to you today uh, in one of our series of videos that we're doing on the ARC Ultimate Annealer. I want to show you today how to set up the programs. So the programs on the ARC Annealer, it, it comes with many different calibers that are set up program-wise. The programs, like I said, are there's a height setting, a temperature setting, and a sensor setting. So each shell is different, and each shell could have multiple programs depending on the level of anneal that you're wanting to do on the shell. Again, I'll show you kind of the effects of some of those things and show you how to set up a program new, load a current program, and whatnot. I'll use a Wildcat as the stepping stone to showing you the different programs and how to set things up and why the programs are what they are for the non-Wildcat cartridges. So the Wildcat cartridge that I'm gonna be uh, showing you today is the seven millimeter Sherman Short. I've got several shells here that we've tumbled in wet media. So they're nice and shiny. The advantage of tumbling your shells in the wet media is it does get the shells very clean, but the advantage on the Arcanealer is that it's really easy to see the anneal line on the outside of the shell. So as I walk through this, you know, one of the first settings that we'll check is the height setting on the program. So I'm going to measure from the base of the shell to the neck shoulder junction. So the neck shoulder junction. And I'm going to measure this in millimeters. So I'm just going to kind of sneak up on it. There's a radius on there. So it's kind of hard to exactly see, get to where you, where you think you're close to where it's supposed to be record that number or note that number and then I want to come over here to my setup screen I want to go to my main menu I'm going to go into the set height function you'll notice I'm using a, just a number two pencil as a stylus you can use any stylus you can use your fingers as well but if you got fat fingers like mine sometimes it's hard to hit some of the smaller buttons there is a section over here to adjust the height there's a button here that says down I'm going to go ahead and push down and that's all the way down to the bottom. I'm going to go ahead and take this opportunity to figure out which shell alignment bushing I need. I've got two here. My shell fits in both. I'm going to pick the one that's a little bit better fit. So the measurement that we got was 41.36 millimeters. So when you click on the window here in the screen, you just delete everything out, whatever was in there. I'm going to enter in 41.36. I'm going to hit OK. And directly underneath that, there's a calculate button. You hit calculate and it's going to display a, a height over here. The number is 1034. You want to remember that number. That'll be our starting point in our program for the 7SS. Push the down button. Make sure you got your bushing in. You can push the test button and it'll raise this up to the position of, of 1034. I'm going to hit save and it's going to save the 1034 down here into my global settings. Uh, the global settings are what uh, the machine's going to use when it's actually uh, annealing a shell. So right now I've got my height recorded down there at 1034. You can also adjust the height here with the slider. Or you can use the plus 50, plus 10, minus 10, minus 50 uh, method. For the Wildcats, I find it easier just to put in the measurement. You can also put in the measurement from a cartridge chamber drawing if you have that for the length from the uh, breech face to the again the the neck shoulder junction that would be the number you put in there in millimeters so now we got our height set it's basically positioning the shell so that the shell is properly positioned in the coil there's a, a series of five sensors in here that we're actually going to measure the temperature of the shell as the shell is being annealed and the height uh, uh, calculation that it just did is going to set the shell such that the second sensor is pointing at my neck shoulder junction. With the sensor array that we have in here, the sensors are uh, positioned apart. I've got sensor one, sensor two, sensor three, sensor four, sensor five. If you'll notice most of the save programs are sensor two or sensor three. In all my save programs, it's best just to start off there and one of the parameters you can change when you're experimenting with your different settings seeing how your settings translate onto paper, then that'll be one of the variables you can change, are either the sensors or the height 
or the temperature. Those are your three variables again. This is the starting point to get your height right. That positions the shell properly in the coil. And so now at this point, I'll show you a little bit better view of the, of the sensors. All right, so now I want to talk about the sensor position relative to the shells and relative to the core inside the uh, coil here. Right, so the sensor position on the shells uh, in the graphic that you'll see here, uh, they're basically spaced out about five millimeters apart and the core itself is about 20 millimeters. Sensor two is always in the middle of the coil by design. So that gives you some idea of relative movement on your height values versus the geometry of the coil. Most of the programs are kind of set up to position the height of the shell at the next shoulder junction, right at basically sensor two here in our coil. By looking at your uh, different shells, you can see the, the sensor layout relative to the shell. Because shells have different geometries, different shoulder angles uh, in particular, and different neck lengths, it can vary and it, where that sensor is picking up the temperature on the shell. And if you get some position that has some uh, inconsistency, if you will, in the, uh, in the results, in the readouts, you can adjust the height slightly to move that sensor off of, say, the radius between the neck and the shoulder. So looking at the graphic here, you can kind of see you know, if you get a, a sensor that's right at the uh, shoulder body junction, for example, you know, that sensor may give you a, a broader range of results than what, uh, what it normally would. So if you adjusted the height by say 25 units, which is about a millimeter uh, on most of the machines, that'll move your sensor out one millimeter up or down, depending on how you want to move it relative to the end of the shell. And uh, now that we have the, the height uh, settings set up, uh, we can go into the menu and, and I will show you how to update and change the uh, MHT settings and temperature settings. So basically we're, we're at our height menu here. We're going to go back to the main menu. We're going to go to the set MHT settings. And once the MHT settings come up, you have the screen that basically is showing you your MHT setting. You have a slider on here uh, and then you have your five sensors across the bottom. We're going to adjust our temperature using the, uh, the slider in the MHT screen. So again, I'm just going to use my stylus. You can slide this around. It'll show you the adjustment number here. And once you get the adjustment that you like, then you can hit save and it'll save the parameter down here into your global parameters again at the very bottom. I'm going to start off at 320 degrees. I'm going to hit save and again that's going to translate this number down to the bottom. I'm going to double check I'm on sensor number two which is where I want to be. So at this point I'm ready to test my first shell. So I'm going to go back to my main menu. I want to go into normal mode. The base drops down. Datum pulls back to make sure there's no shell or anything in there. Make sure you're starting off empty. I want to double check that I'm going to sensor number two. I'm going to double check my global parameters at the bottom. I'm going to put it in auto mode. There's no need for me to put it in feed mode. Like I said at the beginning, I, I kind of moved the feeder off just because I'm only going to be doing one shell at a time here. But if you put it in auto mode, as soon as you drop the shell in, it'll start the anneal cycle and then it'll drop the hot shell out. So it's in auto. I'm going to go ahead and put in my first shell. Light flashes and tells me that it's annealing. Shell drops out and it's hot. You don't want to reach in and grab it. It's hot. I can show you a shell that I had done previously just to give you an idea. Because of the bright shiny shells to start with, you end up with a pretty good view of, of where the color line is on the shell. And it gives you an idea of how much anneal uh, that you're doing to that shell with that setting. Now we'll come back to uh, adjusting, let's say that, uh, you know, this shell that I just did uh, I don't like the, the, the look of the color line on it. It's a little too far up in the, in the shoulder. I want it to be a little bit further down, which indicates to me that the shell is probably too hard, uh, not enough of a kneel. So I want to come in and I want to adjust the, the temperature right here in the normal anneal screen. I'm going to turn off auto and there's a button down here at the bottom that goes five degrees hotter, five degrees colder. These, these were 320. I'm going to go up to 330. So I hit the plus five twice. I'm going to hit auto mode again. I'm going to drop my next shell in. 
And again, it's gonna automatically start the anneal. And when she's done, it'll drop out. And you can look at that shell again and, and see the effect of the, uh, the color line on the shell and see if you need to make a, another change. So the next change I'm gonna make, let's say I'm still not liking what I'm seeing here. The next effect is to uh, adjust the center location. And I can adjust the center locations in the same menu. I've got sensor one, sensor two, three, four, and five. Right now I'm on sensor two, and it's going to the 330 degrees that I set in the global parameters. I want to change it. I want my third, I want my medium sensor, the, the third sensor, I want it to be 330 degrees. So you can see on this last shell, it measured 321 degrees. So I'm going to move down so that we're using sensor three now. And I'm going to drop in another shell after I get her back in auto mode. Annealing again. And again, I'm kneeling to the same temperature of uh, 330 degrees. I'm just, this time, the, it's going to anneal it so that sensor three reads 330 degrees. In this particular instance, I like the way the shell looks in the hot pan here. The, the color line on the shell is, is it a better position for me? The other parameters that you can play around with here, again, is the height. I can't adjust the height from the main menu here. I'm going to go back to the height menu. And from here, I can go plus or minus 10 or 50 units. I'm going to go plus 50, and I'm gonna test that position. <laughs> The plus 50 is moving the base of the shell closer to the coil. I'm moving the shell further into the coil assembly. So once we get our adjustment made here on the height, I'm gonna hit save to translate the new number down into my global parameters. So at this point, I'm gonna go back to my normal uh, screen. I'm still on sensor three, but now my height is at 983, where before I was at 1034. So I'm gonna go ahead and anneal. I'm going to drop the shell in, does its anneal. Again, and I'm looking at the effect of how the color line and how the color changes on the, on the shell as you're uh, going along. So, for example, I have a handful of shells here. We'll show you in a close-up, too. Uh, kind of the effect of the sensor position and how that basically moves the heat further down the shell. The lower you go, the lower sensor you pick on the shell for the anneal. We also have the effect of, of the height change. So here I've, I, I went all the way to 900 from uh, 1034. I have another sample here where I'm just changing the temperature. And it again, showing you the effect of how the, the color line moves down the shell. So I think at this point that kind of demonstrates the, the overall functionality of the annealer and how to set the programs up. Uh, so now I'm going to go in into the main menu and show you how to save the program that you just did. <clears throat> so I'm going to go back, exit out of auto mode. I'm going to go into the main menu. I'm going into my memories. I'm going to just scroll up to the top here. I'm going to select the top one, which is empty. Type in the screen here. This is going to be my 7SS. My height was 1034. My MHT was 320. And I was using sensor number three. So once I have my parameters in here, I'm just gonna hit the add button. And that adds the 7SS program that I just uh, wrote to the top of the of the available programs in the uh, screen. Thanks again for your attention. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'll put out other additional videos. We have another video out with the unpacking video uh, that you uh, hopefully have seen by now. If not, here's your chance to go back and review that one. Like us on Instagram and Facebook and follow us there uh, for updates on availability of uh, Parkin Healers, other products, uh, and new product downloads.